Good morning, Morgan. Good morning to any of Morgan's friends that are joining us for this video. <coughs> Excuse me. And today we're going to start talking about inheritance. And it might be confusing, uh, but uh, it doesn't have to be. In fact, you're going to need to master this because this is a key facet of, uh, of your programming code. Because what you're doing here is you're taking other people's code and uh, uh, as a base for something that you're doing, then you're um, uh, adding to the code, okay, and um, uh, so that you this way you don't uh, have to uh, work so hard. You know, if you've already got a function that does what you want it to do, but it it's just missing a, a couple of little pieces, then you then you make a derived class, add the functionality that you want, okay, and then go for it. And of course, but where it's, uh, what can be confusing is the scope of these things, and that's what we're going to talk about. You know, like, hey man, if I uh, can I overwrite a method in this fun uh, in this class to make it do a little something more than I want to do, that sort of thing. Anyway, let's get to reading. Of course, a language feature would not be worthy of the name class without supporting inheritance. The syntax for a derived class definition looks like this. All right, so it's just like the other one, right? There's your name of your class, and then you go, and you put the name of the class you want to copy, and then you go ahead and you make, uh, they put in the code that you want to add uh, to the class that you copied. The name base class name must be defined in a scope containing the derived class definition. In place of a base class name, other arbitrary expressions are also allowed. This can be useful, for example, when the base class is defined in another module. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, what they're doing here is this is uh, if <clears throat> it has to do with the scope. Where are you going with this? Okay, so the base class here was uh, close by. You could get it. But uh, here you had to uh, go a little bit deeper to get it. Okay? Because you had to go to this library. This will be uh, really useful for when you want to steal copies of classes from some of these uh, libraries you're going to be using, like uh, Beautiful Soup, which we'll be talking about in the next series. Let's continue. Execution of a derived class definition proceeds the same as for a base class. When the class object is constructed, the base class is remembered. This is used for resolving attribute references. If a requested attribute is not found in the class, the search proceeds to look in the base class. This rule is applied recursively if the base class itself is derived from some other class. Okay, so what it's saying there is that you know you could have the uh, you could derive a class from a class that was derived from another class that's derived from another class, okay? And what it does is is it, uh, when it looks at your code, okay, and it sees a variable or a function that you haven't defined, it goes to the base cat class and goes like, oh, it must be in this class. And if it doesn't find it there, then it goes and it looks in the class that it was derived from and so forth and so on and yes and you can see how this could get confusing there's nothing special about instantiation of derived classes derived class name creates a new instance of the class method references are resolved as follows the corresponding class attribute is searched descending down the chain of base classes if necessary and the method reference is valid if this yields a function object Derived classes may override methods of their base classes. Because methods have no special privileges when calling other methods of the same object, a method of a base class that calls another method defined in the same base class may end up calling a method of a derived class that overrides it. For Ouch. C++ programmers, all methods in Python are effectively virtual. An overriding method in a derived class may in fact want to extend rather than simply replace the base class method of the same name. There is a simple way to call the base class method directly. Okay, so there's a there's a function 
in the class, okay, but it doesn't quite do what you want it to do, okay? So you're calling it, but now you're going to modify it. Just call base class name, dot method name, self, arguments. This is occasionally useful to clients as well. Note that this only works if the base class is accessible as base class name in the global scope. Python has two built-in functions that work with inheritance. All right. Now, uh, because figuring out inheritance can be a little confusing, <clears throat> Python has these built-in functions uh, that will help you figure it out. And we're not going to go ahead and go into uh, exactly how these functions work. All you need to know is that they exist and they're there to help you figure out uh, a problem with scope if you've got a class call it derived from a class, derived from a class, derived from a class. All right? Okay, well, with that, uh, this video is over, and we'll see you in the next one. Now behave.